Okay, first you take the arms, you cut off the arms at the elbow, then you take the arm and you sort of move it around like that in front of itself. It doesn't actually do anything to help, but it does mock the person that you're cutting to pieces. Then you do the same there, and the same with the legs. Always doing the same motion, you know, to the body. But after you've done all that, you take each individual piece and you give it a name. You've got to be one with the piece, and then you have to have sex with it. Then you take it and then you attach the elbows to the arm via the small intestines and then once they're all stuck together you're like the person's like eh, and you hang them up and you move them around like that and then you write on his face you piece of shit you were killed because of the royal decree of the royal mistress of Afghanistan etc 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 and then you sort of just leave the room leave it for the maid maybe you write a little note saying ha 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 fuck me that hurt holy fuck you're alive why are you alive of course I'm alive. I'm immortal. The bullet just knocked me out is all. I always thought the whole immortality thing was a gimmick. Nope. I am 100% completely unkillable. My bones can't be broken and anything fleshy just grows back. I'm like Wolverine. God damn, that really stings though. Did you really have to use hollow points, you inconsiderate son of a- <laughs> Minion, do it again. AGAIN! Okay, okay, that's enough. Hagen, shall we continue the review? After you've just been shot? Eh, pfft. Bullets ain't shit. But our fans, however, are shit. And it's our duty to give them what they want. Indeed it is, Viking. Minion, give the fans what they want. Ha <laughs> ha! In your face! For those of you just joining us, the band Sai is a Japanese black metal band that has experimented with every style of music there is. And the album we talked about last before Viking's Little Nap was a giant melting pot of every genre under the sun. Blues, disco, psychedelic rock, classical music, you name it. Now you might be wondering, what can they possibly do after that? Well, they decided to blow everyone's minds by doing what no one expected. By making somewhat normal music. Their next two albums, Gallows Gallery and Hangman's Hymn, are relatively straightforward affairs, though they're completely different from each other. While Gallows Gallery is a power metal-esque romp with psychedelic organs, Hangman's Hymn is a symphonic metal rampage with Teutonic thrash elements in the style of Sodom and Creator. They're both very meh albums. <laughs> bluesy, black metal, disco, funk, grindcore that came before it? This was pretty restrained. Be that as it may, Gallows Gallery got a tough break. Firstly, the guy charged with handling the mastering on the album was an amateur hobbyist who botched it rather badly. And Century Media didn't want to release the album anyway because they were expecting something a little more black metal. Because the one thing that Century Media didn't expect from Psy was for Psy to sound like Psy. Yeah, it's not as if they've been making this kind of music for the last five fucking years or anything. No, all that experimental shit came right the fuck out of nowhere. Psy actually spread a rumor that the real reason they were dropped from Century Media was that the hidden track on Gallo's Gallery was recorded using sonic warfare techniques from World War II and would psychologically damage the listener. Because that's a way better story than some lousy creative differences shit. Plus, it's really, really believable. Did we mention that Marai likes scary shit? It's like being in a bell tower with a really bad hangover. God, thank God I'm already insane, otherwise this would be extremely upsetting. Okay, that's enough of that. Play something different. What? Oh, yeah. 
That's the good stuff. In the end, Gallows Gallery was released by Candlelight instead, and then Psy hooked up with The End Records to release their next two albums, Hangman's Hymn and Scenes from Hell. They then went back to Candlelight because The End apparently swindled them out of 10,000 bucks. Yeah, if you haven't noticed, Psy has some really shit luck with record labels. These two albums suffer a bit in my opinion because, due to the genres being explored, they shift a lot more emphasis onto one of Psy's weaker points, that being Mirai's singing. It's clear that Mirai's area of expertise is keyboards and composing, because he's never been a particularly strong vocalist, clean, harsh, or otherwise. His voice just doesn't have a lot of power behind it. It doesn't sound like the guttural roar from Satan's butthole that black metal vocalists are supposed to emulate. Mirai just kind of sounds like a cat hacking up a hairball. I will say that at least it's still a fucking evil and fucking brutal cat, but there's not much else I can say. But they did take a pretty big step to remedy that. Indeed they did. And who better to administer a remedy than the doctor? Ah yes, the doctor. Now this is where we dig into their 2010 release, Scenes from Hell. To make up for the relative sanity displayed in their last two releases, Psy pulled out all the stops and kicked the shit into overdrive with Scenes from Hell. Most notably, they enlisted the services of the Doctor. No, not that one. No, 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 wait, back up. That's the ticket. Doctor, meet Cannibal. She was originally hired to be a model in the Hangman's Hymn album booklet, but she gave Mirai a demo of her death metal band at the time, and he was impressed enough to bring her into Psy as a secondary singer. Weird that Me Cannibal has a lower, manlier register than Me Rai does. Compared to the other shit I know about her, um, no, no, that's not that fucking weird. Doctor Me Cannibal is notable for possibly being even stranger than Sai itself. I mean, Mirai is pretty fucking brutal. One time his neighbor's house burnt down, so he just sat among the ashes and wrote a song there because he felt like it. But Me Cannibal is possibly even more hardcore. She growls plays saxophone, dresses up like a bloodied angel on stage, is an actual legitimate doctor of physics no less, eats bugs, drinks blood, and insists on recording her vocals topless. Oh wow. This. This is what love feels like. Doctor, doctor, give me the news, I got a bad case of loving you. Never sing again. No, you can't stop me. Minion. So yes, the insanity returns in full form. The best way, I feel, to describe Scenes from Hell would be like a heavier and more chaotic infidel art. And just like infidel art, it's dark and orchestral and it marks a fundamental change in how the band makes music. In this case, the addition of Dr. Me Cannibal. Granted, it's just yet another change in a band that does nothing but change, but you know how it goes. And speaking of... well, it's probably an extremely cliche and obvious bit of criticism, but... You know, Psy goes all over the place, and it's going to be rare to find someone who enjoys all of the places they go to. It's not uncommon for people to just pick and choose their favorite eras of Psy and just ignore the rest. But that's really the worst thing you can say about Psy, that you won't enjoy everything they do. But even then, they still got something for everybody. Thing. Dr. McCannibal, though pretty awesome, hasn't been integrated into the band very well. She plays saxophone, and most of the songs that need a saxophone are on scenes from Hell. 
So what the hell does she do when Sai plays anything from their two-decade-long catalogue? The answer... pretty much nothing. For a good amount of any live shows, she'll just stand around holding a saxophone and looking pretty. Eh, I'm not complaining. Of course not, because you're a pervert. Now let's keep this thing rolling. <laughs> Insomnophobia is Sai's most recent release, and naturally it's just as crazy as its predecessors. In fact, it might be one of their craziest. If Scenes from Hell was like a more chaotic infidel art, then Insomnophobia is like a more chaotic imaginary sonicscape. Except significantly more terrifying. Though we've come to expect nothing less from Mirai. For this album, Mirai actually recommends you get high beforehand and listen to the album with headphones. Then what? You're gonna ask me to try this maze game or figure out what's wrong with this picture? Tell me how great LemonParty.com is? <laughs> Clearly Mirai thinks I'm some sort of idiot. By the way, check out LemonParty.com. It's super fun! Mirai has a really perverse sense of humor, as can be observed in his numerous, numerous interviews. Oh, and speaking of perverse, thanks to these interviews, I now know way too much about Mirai's sex life. And guess what? Mirai likes scary shit. I didn't even know urethral torture was a thing, but apparently Mirai knows about it, and so does Google Image Search. Don't do that shit. Don't make the mistakes I made. On a more serious and somber note, recent interviews have Mirai talk a lot about age and impermanence. The man's 42 as of 2012 and still works a day job, because making klezmer, zedeka, whatever metal sadly doesn't pay the bills. He's also stated that Insomnophobia could possibly be Sai's last album. If so, it's a perfect parting gift. It's just a shame that he thinks his musical mind is run dry and it's unable to create anymore. It's kind of like your vagina. <clears throat> what the fuck did you just say? Mm. Oh, nothing. Just a little light-hearted joke between good friends. You are greatly underestimating me, Viking, in case you hadn't noticed. I am a fucking god! And a supervillain, and a dictator, and I've put a genocide a couple of times, and I'm really fucking tall! I've tortured entire families who have spoken out against me, and that includes their pets, and their friends, and their friends' pets. And as soon as I get my hands on you, Viking, I'm gonna cut you in fucking half! And I'm gonna take one of your halves, and I'm gonna feed it to the other one! And then I'm gonna take that surviving half, and I'm gonna feed it to the fucking crocodiles! Huh? Oh, sorry. I stopped listening right after you said, you are great. I'm off to get a drink. Minion! Give that fucker a German suplex! Ah! 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 Joke's on you, asshole. That's a fisherman suplex. N no, wait, what are you doing? Ah! Ah! Done yet? I do think we are. Good! Let's finish this! I fucking love Psy. The weirder, the better. In fact, the only times I full on hated a Psy album was when it was too generic. If you want music that you literally won't be able to predict, then try listening to one of their albums. You might like it, or you might run away crying. Either's good for me. As the old saying goes, variety is the spice of life. And as the other old saying goes, he who controls the spice controls the universe. And I think we've definitely proven that Psy rules the universe. Psy is one of a kind, too weird to live and too rare to die. Which is why it's such a shame that Mirai thinks he's run out of juice, but you know how... Oh my god. The legend goes on. The title still exudes a vibe of finality, but they are making a new album. And even if it is their last one, they're leaving one hell of a legacy behind. 20 years, 10 albums, every genre of music dominated and destroyed. That's something to be proud of. 
So here's to Sai. They did everything there was to do, and they lived to tell the tale. A tale full of rocking riffs, clattering keys, symphonic stings, and above all, scary shit. We salute you. You know, Hagen, despite our differences, I feel we make a pretty unbeatable team. Well, I hate you, but I do kind of like the feeling of being the sanest person in the room. Cream gravy! Yes. Right. No, oh, we're the shit, man. The ultimate duo. You're the Emperor to my Darth Vader, the X-Death to my Gilgamesh, the Smo to my Ornstein, the Biden to my Barack Obama! Yes, right. You're all the cool ones. Wait. You're Smog and Arstein. Bing! Can you guess which one is Smo, and therefore you? See, one of them is a svelte and sexy stallion who's the greatest at everything and everyone loves him, but the other is a Buddha-bellied bunghole who nobody likes. Now, when you take our relationship and you apply it on those terms, I feel that... <laughs>